hello and welcome so last time uh, we started with the naive base so let's continue with that so last time i talked about this base theorem right so this is the formula that we have given and I also i talked about that uh, what does this formula means right so the point is that uh, that given an evidence b how much your belief is going to change about this event a under this condition b so so uh, maybe maybe there would be chances that that this evidence doesn't contribute at all so if if if, if this doesn't contribute at all then there would be no changes uh, no changes on this event a right right so so this is what this base theorem captures so let's suppose that uh, that you see that this term so so this term is probability of a into probability of b given a divided by probability of b right so so let's suppose this this term is 1 right so here what what you are calculating here is probability of a and here what you are calculating is same probability of a but under this condition b right so what i am saying that under this event b under this event b how much your belief about a is going to change right so this term will tell you that how much belief uh, how much about uh, how much your belief about a is going to change if this term is one then under this condition b probability of a is equal to probability of a so this evidence doesn't tell you anything about or this doesn't and contribute uh, uh, to change your belief about a right so if this term is less than one then this term is less than one then then uh, then then you will get the probability that that uh, maybe uh, your uh, under this evidence b that uh, that that uh, what was your belief about a earlier now it's going to change and maybe it will be less right and if this term is greater than one then there it chances that under this evidence b uh, you are going to more certain about this a right so this is what the base theorem captures i hope you have got the intuition behind uh, this base theorem and last time also i explained this thing okay now let's move and uh, let, let me define some terms here so so this this probability is the a priori probability a priori why because this probability is before any evidence right so we are calculating this probability of a uh, we are calculating this probability of a right uh, un under no circumstances or under no condition right that that, that is why we are calling this uh, a priori and here if you look this one is uh, a posteriori right because why we are calling it here if we see that that post is there so uh, what will be the updates on your belief about this a after getting this uh, uh, evidence b so this is the a posteriori probability right and this term is this term is uh, this one is measurement of b under certain condition so under condition a right and this is the measurement of b under all condition so this evidence so overall point is that this evidence may happen under this condition a or it may happen when a is not right, right? so so this this uh, denominator terms captures the measurement of b in all scenario right and whereas this 
captures the measurement of b uh, under under certain condition that that condition is imposed by this uh, event a right so that was all about the terminology now let's move to next okay now uh, there is uh, types of model so i just wanted to give here the introduction about that uh, we have two types of model here that is discriminative model and generative model so why i am uh, why i have introduced this because uh, just because we have gone through this regression right and also we have we will be going through this naive base so this naive base falls under this uh, generative model right and this regression it, this falls under this uh, discriminative model right so we have this two type of model so let's uh, have a overview and just uh, uh, we can go through that what uh, what is the difference between them right so uh, in discriminative model we directly estimate that probability of y given x so probability of uh, y that is output given features so, yeah output given uh, input right and in generative model what we do we first estimate this probability of x given y then after estimating this we will deduce this probability of y given x right and here in discriminative model why what we do is we directly estimate this but here to estimate this first you will have to calculate this one now now here what we learn uh, in discriminative model we learn uh, this uh, decision boundary right so so if you have already gone through this linear regression then then what we try to here learn is this line or hypothesis function uh, so we train our model with uh, uh, with the uh, parameters and and uh, we train till uh, we have the optimal value of this parameter right so we try to learn different different lines right something like that and and here in uh, generative model what we try to learn is uh, is uh, Gaussian sorry uh, probability distribution right here we try to learn is the probability distribution right so so uh, what does it mean that that so what we try to do here we try to fit uh, or we can say that uh, uh, we try to uh, uh, what we what I can say that uh, so 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 these data points uh, these data points are taken from some kind of distribution right so maybe uh, let's say Gaussian uh, distribution so maybe so maybe these two kinds of distribution is there sorry two Gaussian distribution is there and 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 let's suppose that it has mean mean that at that position mu and it has mean mu two right so basically uh, in generative model what we try to do is we try to we try to uh, uh estimate that uh that uh, let let's suppose that this this all the samples ha has been taken from some distribution so what kind of distribution will uh, fit uh, to this data right and 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 what what kind of uh, distribution will fit to this category right so 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 maybe uh, that the to this to this uh, class of data maybe that uh, that uh, Gaussian uh, random variable th that with mean mu one will fit to this uh, this, this uh, data or maybe uh, with given this data that uh, that this distribution this um, normal distribution will fit to this data so we try to learn that this probability distribution of the data right i hope you have got the idea that uh, what is the what we are learning in uh, discriminative model and 
generative model right and examples are like uh, discriminative model this regression and support vector machine and in generative model we have example like gda and naive base so why i have introduced this different because naive base is generative model and it's GD, this gda is the gaussian discriminative analysis right so let, let's move further okay so in naive base uh we uh we have the three type of classifier uh, that uh, gaussian naive base uh, bernoulli naive base and multinomial naive base and these two that bernoulli naive base and this multi multinomial naive base are have uh, input or feature that is of discrete nature right so here also that that feature will be discrete but in gaussian naive base the feature will be uh, continuous or the input will be continuous so this is the main difference between this gaussian so we will have the two kind of naive base classification that is one where will be where we will be classif classifying based on this continuous feature and the second where we will have the uh, uh, discrete input and so these three types of classifications are there and what we will do try today we will go through this bernoulli naive base and if uh, the, and after that we will go through this multinomial naive base right okay so let's move okay so last lecture i have explained you that why what is naive in naive base right so it is nothing but the but the uh, what we assume so suppose let's suppose that that uh, this this probability of a given b is equal to probability of a so what i can say about this so event a is independent of event b right because because if you see that this event under this event b there is no effect on this the probability of a so i can say that probability of a is independent of probability of b so this is normal normal independent normal independence right and let's suppose that and that we have n number of events under this condition b right and how we can write this so without any condition how we can write this uh, uh, under this event b what will the probability of a so under this event b probability of a, a1 is a1 given b right and since a1 has happened what will what will be the probability of a2 so under this condition that a1 and b2 has happened the probability of a2 will be this right and if this a2 has happened then what will the probability of a3 so under this condition that a1 and a2 and b had already happened then what will be the probability of a3 so so on so we have not made any assumption here this is uh, how you uh, you will expand or you will write in terms of like uh, here you, this is this is how you will write the probabilities right now now what we are assuming what and why we are calling this naive base naive is that under this condition b all these events a1 a2 a3 a4 till an are independent so under this event b a1 has nothing to do with a2 a2 has nothing to do with a3 or a1 and a4 has nothing to do with the happening of a1 a2 a3 or anyone right so all these are independent so under this condition under the conditional independence what we can write is 
so 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 here we haven't imposed any kind of condition but after imposing this conditional independence how we can write this as like this so under this condition b probability of a1 is this right and since a1 has happened then what will be the probability of a2 is the probability of a2 given b because a1 has nothing to do with a2 or a2 has nothing to do with a1 or i can say that the happening of a1 has nothing to do with the happening of a2 right so so that is why here if you see that under this condition we were taking so but here you see that that since a1 and a2 are independent so a, a1 has already happened then to happening of this a2 there is uh, no dependency on a1 similarly if probability of a3 uh, have not probability have probability of a3 have no condition on a1 or a2 right so so all these are conditional independent so that is why we can write like this and if we write the in compact form then we can use this uh, multiplication that pi so this is what that is written right okay so that is why uh, due to this condition that is why we call call that naive basis uh, uh, so then in naive base so what is naive in naive base so that is why th uh, under this condition right so basically these are these okay now let's move to the why and why we why we are making this uh, assumption uh, so already like uh, uh, math mathematically this is not a correct assumption but but uh, in practice uh, uh, this assumption uh, doesn't make doesn't make so much different and uh, we have the good result that is why uh, we can make use of this assumption to make the life easier and make the math easier right okay now what i am going to do is i am going to take an example so now i will start with bernoulli uh naive base right so to explain this uh, i will be explaining with the help of example and using this example we will also uh, go through the theory part right so uh, so uh, the main goal of this example to go through the bernoulli uh, night base okay now if you remember that uh, that what kind of problem we were solving is the classification problem right so and uh, and uh, when i started this lecture then i i gave you an example of spam classification right uh, where where we want uh, where where a, a given new mail given a new mail that is coming into your inbox and we want to classify this if, if, if this mail is a spam or not a spam right okay so so how you are going to make that prediction the first of all first of all uh you need so so based on the previous mail or based on the previous data set that where you have already made some kind of classification that this mail falls under spam this mail falls under not a spam right so so these trainee data set you will have already right and and you will train your model based on your trainee set right because in trainee set you will have a lot of example that that uh, that uh, some of the mail will belong from the spam and some of the mail will belong from the uh, ham or not a spam right and and what what is the problem statement that given a new mail you want to predict now that it is a uh, spam or a ham right so so 
so now that is one problem statement that you can make use of uh, that naive base and you can make such kind of classification that will predict that uh, mail is spam or ham and one more uh, thing that uh, we can use the naive base in uh, document classification right so i will be taking a similar kind of thing in, uh, that document classification that uh, you will have you will give an certain documents and now a new document came into picture now you have to find that that certain documents will fall under uh, this so we, we will have basically so, uh, so certain documents will fall under uh, maybe a certain class right okay so i will be talking uh, i will be taking uh, the example on the document classification or you can so this is the example so let's start with the bernoulli naive base so let me first of all explain you what is the problem statement okay so so first of all we have uh, this trainee data and we have four documents and uh, this are the documents id and in four documents the content of the document is this uh, the first uh, documents uh, have the content this chinese Beijing and chinese right so in first document you have this three word right and this 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 falls under class c so i am uh, taking this class c is equal to china that means that means this document belongs to class c right and the second document that is chinese chinese shanghai this documents also belong to class c and the third document also belong to class c this fourth document doesn't belong to class c so we have this trainee set and we know the classifications of these documents right so in which class does, does this documents belongs to or does all of the documents belongs to that that is already known to us right now we have this test data now now the problem statement is that given a new document i want to classify that if this belongs to c or not right so it is a problem statement so so we we will be uh, we will make use of this naive base and we will classify this document if if this document belongs to class c or it doesn't belong to class c right okay okay uh so what we are now now let me um, tell you about this vector that is the feature vector or you can say it in case of the uh, document classification problem you can call it as a vocabulary so 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 how how we are going to uh, form or make this vocabulary so what we are going to do we are going to scan this first document let me first erase all this thing so we are going to first scan this first document so this vocabulary is made out of this trainee data right 
so what we are going to do we simply we will scan this first document and whatever the word we are facing that will be that we will put here right and only one time right if chinese is already there then that will be introduced in this vocabulary only one time and so Beijing is new to this uh this uh vocabulary so we will introduce here and this chinese has already been introduced so no need to do that no need to do and shanghai so you got the idea that how we are uh form forming this vocabulary right okay so if you see that uh so we we have taken very small document and even the content of this document is three word or four word right and suppose so so let's assume that you have the very very long document you see that uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, you have one document that is of 10 pages and the second document of maybe five pages so so you can uh, see that that how long this vector is going to be so this 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 vector will belongs to some n dimensional space right so that n can be maybe 1000 10000 right so this is going to be very long vector and that is why the dimension would be very high right so let's 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 talk about this example only here we have this x now after forming this x what we are going to do we are going to vectorize our documents so document one document two document three document four so these all belongs to the our training set so what we are going to do we are going to vectorize vectorize i meant to say that uh, we are going to assign one if this the document content belongs to this vocabulary right so this 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 is the document this is the vocabulary all this vocabulary right and this is the document one and now look, let's look at this document one so chinese belongs to document one right and and do we have this chinese in vocabulary yes so we will assign this as one right and this busing is also in document one do we have this vocabulary in our uh, voc do we have this word in our vocabulary yes and this shanghai is not in document one so we will assign zero and so on similarly uh, we will do for the document two document three document four right so this is what we call the vectorization and if you see one more thing here that uh, we are counting only one time right if you see look at this example one chinese has occurred two times right but but we are not worrying about the occurrence of how many times it is occurring so so if it is in vocabulary the first document the content if it is in vocabulary then we will simply assign it as one and it doesn't matter how many times it has been occurred right so you see that here uh, here that uh, uh, that this vector that this vectorization uh, will have either value one or zero right so it will so either either a particular word either a particular word would belong to our vocabulary either a particular word may belong to our vocabulary or may not belong to our vocabulary right so so you see you, you, if if you are getting the sense of this statement then you if i ask you that what kind of distribution will uh, define uh, this event right so so 
given a document in a document a certain word may belong to our vocabulary or may not belong to our vocabulary right so we have two things right right so 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 this is nothing but a bernoulli event where we have two things uh, success or failure right so here what is success or failure if from a certain document if a particular word belongs to our vocabulary then it is success and if a particular word that doesn't belong to our uh, that doesn't belong in our vocabulary then it is failure right okay now now we have done the vectorization now let's move to next okay now this is a this is what the problem statement is right given this document 5 given this document 5 what will be the probability that it will be in class c right given this pro document 5 so document 5 is this our test set right given this uh, document 5 what will be the probability that it will be in, in not in class c so ultimately what we are going to do we are going to find uh, some probability that it will be in class c and some probability in that will that it will be not in class c and and maybe we will get like 0 0.6 for this class c and then 0 0.4 for this class that it doesn't belong to class c so 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 after calculating this probability now we will make the prediction that that it will belong to class c or not so you can see that it has the higher certainty right that it will belong to class c so we will assign this d5 to class c right so this is this was the problem statement now we have written down is at the mathematically and if you see that somehow somehow this this uh this falls under this uh, uh uh we can say the this falls under this uh base theorem right so we can make use of the base theorem and we can make a decision right so so given this evidence d5 how much so so you see that you have this c event right already so so how much your belief about c going to change and how much your belief about not happening of this c is going to change so whatever the stronger belief you will get that then then you will assign this that then you can say that that this certain thing belongs to c or not c right okay 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 so so uh hmm. okay so so if if we let's 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 look at first this one so this is this this is what we are trying to do right probability of uh c that given d5 right so under And, and using this base theorem what how we can write that probability of c into probability of this uh, document d5 given c and, and this probability of d5 right and in d5 right d5 we have one two three four five so we can write like this given 
C right and this d5 can be again the probability of d5 can be uh, written under all scenario uh, under all scenario i mean to say that under this uh, that that probability of c or that not probability of c right And again, uh, we can write this term in terms of, uh, but we are assuming that uh, that that all of these a1, a2, a3, a4, a5 are condensed conditional independence, right? So under this C, all these a1, a2, a3, a4, a5 are conditionally independent, right? So, and I have already explained you, so we can write like this right and the product of right okay and and you see that this 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 will be from 1 to n right not m so what is n here uh, the number of words in a test document right so we want to calculate the probability of aj given c right so what does this this term means so here not aj but we can say that aj is equals to 1 let me explain you what is that equals to 1 right so what is so this probability of a j given c or this probability of a j is equals to 1 given c so so under this so under this condition c that uh, that what we are assuming that under this condition c that a j will appear in the vocabulary right that is why we, i am writing that a equals to one so what will be the what will be the probability so under this condition c it may happen that that a particular word may may um may appear in vocabulary or may not right so that is what i was explaining earlier right so given a document so so that is what the pro uh, bernoulli uh, that we can make use of the bernoulli so all these data points are the sample of the bernoulli distribution i can say right so this you will have to understand that probability aj equals to one that means that that it will uh it will appear in the uh, vocabulary right so given this condition c that uh, so so given this condition c that uh, what will the probability that uh, this particular word will appear in the vocabulary similarly this a2 what in under this condition c under this condition c that this will appear under this condition c that this will appear under this condition c that this will appear right so this the all these uh, uh, we can say that all these are distributed bernoulli right or all this data sample has been taken from the bernoulli distribution right and and this one is also pc why that it has also the two right c can be yes or no right so success or failure right so so overall point is that let me first of all clear this so the overall point is that that we can parameterize parameterize by that pc we can say that phi c and we can 
call this event that is Bernoulli distributed and also this is one is also Bernoulli distributed all of these events are Bernoulli distributed so we can parameterize by these variables right so this is what I have written here so this is also the yes or no right yes or no so this is Bernoulli distributed and and what will the probability that under this condition C that a certain word will appear in a vocabulary or it may not appear in the vocabulary so this is also the Bernoulli distribution that all these data points are taken from this Bernoulli distribution and similarly under this C bar uh, that uh, that that uh, a certain word appears in a uh, vocabulary this will be also in Bernoulli distribution right and how many parameters we will have right so so you see that so let's let's focus on first of all this one so uh, you see here we have j is j right so we are going to calculate this probability for probability of a one that is the first word right this right so 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 how many parameters will be there for this one so we will have uh, five parameters right because it depends on the number of words in our uh, test right so that number of that we will check for each word right we will check for each word that if it under this condition c if that that particular word belongs to our vocabulary or not right so we will have d parameter and that d is the length of the vocabulary right so length of this vocabulary so here we have d is equals to 6 and this belongs to 6 r6 right and similarly similarly if if we have to calculate this parameter then this will be also of we will be calculating six parameters right because we will be calculating the probability under this condition that that if this word appears in vocabulary or not right i hope uh, so 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 for this particular example and 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 uh, we will have only one parameter for this right because this yes or no so that is the one parameter so if if we add up all this parameter we will have 2d plus one parameter so two uh, so the point is that uh, the point is that we will have in this particular example we will have uh, 2 into 5 plus 1 is equals to 11 so we will have total 11 parameters right and we are going to make use of this 11 parameter to uh, classify if that particular document is in uh, C if that particular document belongs to C or it doesn't belong to C right okay from the given problem statement we can assume that the given data sample taken from some Bernoulli distribution so I have already described this point now we want to estimate these parameters right so uh, what we want to do we want to estimate these parameter that make the observed data more likely so we want to estimate these parameter that will uh, so once we have the estimate of these parameter then we will have more insight about the data and we can may draw the conclusion right so that is what now we want to estimate the parameter these parameters right uh, that may that make the observed data more more likely right 
so you want to understand the data behavior of your overall point is that you want to understand the data behavior by estimating these parameters so so what we are going to do is maximum likelihood so we are going to calculate the maximum likelihood to uh, observe uh, what is more likely right so so what we are going to do we are going to take the our likelihood function and and how we can uh, so likelihood function right so so this now this likelihood function will be uh, will be function of these parameters right and uh, so, and we have the data points right these are the data points and so 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 the how we define this maximum likelihood is the product of this probability right so so what we are going to do the now once we get this maximum likelihood function then we are going to differentiate with respect to these parameters we are going to differentiate with these parameter and before that we will take the log of so we will uh, take the log of this likelihood function that will give you the log likelihood after that we will differentiate with respect to each parameter and we will equate to zero and then we will estimate our that at what value uh, we have the more likely so overall point is that we will find the emily for phi c phi i given c and phi i given c bar so at what val value of these parameter we will have the uh, more likely or we have we will have the maximum likelihood so so at what value so once you perform these steps that i am going to skip right and once you perform these step then you will have the estimate for this mle right and this is what you are going to get now so these are the simple terms just you have to understand what is what now once you will understand what is what then uh, to calculate this is an easy job okay okay so so first so let me explain you that that this i is the indicator function indicator function and if if something is written under this i and if if this this un, uh, uh, something is written under this i that is uh, some condition is written under this i uh, and if this is if, uh, true then it will return one and if it's um, false then it will return zero so this is what the here uh, i have written the indicator function right so so after performing this step you will get the emily's that maximum likelihood for our parameter so these are the three you are going to get right so this is the indicator function that here i have also written so let's try to understand this first this one so if you remember that what what it was it was nothing but this uh, phi c was the probability of c right and c was the two thing that it will be yes or no right so so if i ask you that from this given data set what will the probability of c it will be you can easily calculate that it will be 1 by 4 right and what will be the probability of c bar it will be 1 by 1 by uh, 4 sorry it this is one is 3 by 4 and this will be 1 by 4 so this is what here we have estimated right so you see that that this y i belongs to the output right so we have this yes 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 and no so what we are going what we are doing here that we are going through each 
example set so we have m is equals to 4 each training set and we are going to the each output and if if it is c then it will that uh, that statement will be true and indicator function will be return 1 and we are going to sum up right so what is happening here that this will return it will check the first then second that loop then third so what will simply it will be 1 plus 1 plus 1 divided by this is the total example that is 4 that 3 by 4 so we have already calculated this probability of c so that is what this all indication means. so you do not have to uh, worry about this all indication so uh, these all are the easy overall what we are doing is the counting using the indicator function and nothing else right and and if you remember 